Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining us and spending time this afternoon. My name is Craig Bovet. I'm the National ICT Channel Manager here uh, at Business MBN, and obviously we're working very closely with Ingram Micro on their Cloud Movers campaign. So last time that we ran a webinar, uh, we talked a little bit more about the technology side of the MBN, uh, how with our different traffic classes, you know, we can enable the prioritization of data across our network, particularly uh, in relation to voice and the Microsoft Teams side of things. Today, I thought we'd take a little bit of a step back and talk more about how uh, MBN and our ICT channel program is working with our partners, making ensuring that they have the right information at the right time, talking to their end customers so that we can properly plan for a good migration across to the MBN, uh, but also how we can enable that digital transformation conversation. And obviously really importantly, how we can find new revenue streams for partners, whether that's from a services point of view, or maybe it's with a service provider as well. So the first thing I just wanted to kick off on was just a bit of a recap of where we are um, from an MBN rollout perspective. So we're pretty much sitting well on track uh, to finish the completion of the rollout at the end of 2020. We're about 85% of the way through. Um, we've got around just under a million businesses that we know are now ready for service uh, and to connect. And about half of those have already made the move across. Um, that's really important because obviously as we roll out, we've also got the disconnections following about 18 months later. So we know we've still got a good kind of half a million companies to move across uh, in the meantime, plus with the rest of the rollout, we've still got you know the majority of the business community coming up because we're now rolling into more of the CBD and metro areas. Um, but in saying that, even for those that have already connected, you know, we can see a lot within the SMB um, side of things that really they're sitting on the residential plans. And this is where we kind of come into issues with you know, quality of service and contention. And we'll dive a little bit more into how we uh, attack that with our traffic classes. Um, but the good thing is, is we're still constantly seeing around 20,000 businesses uh, a month connecting. So there's some really good conversations out there happening, but there's also a lot of green space out there for you guys to go talk to your existing customers and more importantly, leverage the program and leveraging micro to go out and find new customers and use this as a stepping stone to get into the business, not just from a connectivity point of view or telephony point of view, but really you know, around starting those conversations about moving to things like cloud and digital transformation within there. Now, one of the things that we are seeing, you know, purely from a network perspective, as I go out and, you know, talk to partners and talk to end customers, is really at that kind of network level. As we're rolling out the network and replacing, you know, ADSL, particularly in regional and rural areas, you know, we're starting to have much more of that uh, agility conversation in the network. And what I mean by that is even from a, a micro business point of view or a small business point of view, you know, that might still mean uh, popping on the MBN, still using their existing ADSL uh, in the meantime, and maybe putting a, a 4G um, you know, dongle in the back of the router there. So you've got, you know, three connections there to manage. That's really what we're starting to talk about, you know, like basic kind of SD-WAN type stuff. You know, as we move up the stack and you might have some you know, larger customers where they might have, say, you know, a, a Telstra or a Vocus or an Optus fiber into the building. So they're utilizing that bandwidth. You know, the MBN is still going to come in and still have connectivity in each of those locations. So again, we can start having an agility conversation around the network and being able to manage that, you know, from a WAN optimization, you know, again, to the SD-WAN piece, but it really is, you know, moving down from what was an enterprise conversation in that network space, coming down really, really quickly into that medium space. And particularly with, you know, the onset of 4G and, and 5G, you know, into that micro business in the rural areas, everyone needs to have a managed network to a certain extent. So we have that resiliency, you know, so we have that, um, uh, business continuity and, and basic disaster recovery type conversation. So as a partner, no matter where you kind of sit in that, that space from a, a customer size or customer vertical piece, um, even if you're sitting in the rural areas and the majority of your customers, you know, sit in that micro, you know, uh, local shopping florist type piece, there really is still a conversation to be had around how you can go in and help them manage their network, have a proper conversation around your know, application 
prioritization, how what they're using in their business from a cloud perspective, a, a VoIP perspective, and how you can manage that. Whether or not you're actually doing the physical connection really is an opportunity to get your foot in the door and own that customer from a communications story in there. And again, these are the types of conversations that I'm going out and having when I talk to small businesses directly, you know, through the likes of uh, the Chambers of Commerce, et cetera. We're really getting them to think about the MBN as not just a broadband or, or internet conversation. It is really a whole of business conversation and you need to think about how you build resiliency and to those networks. So NBN will always kind of form just one piece of that, that component, but obviously with the likes of you know, the SD-WAN boxes and, and what you can do with smarts in the networking space now, really, really can start having that no matter where they kind of sit on that, that SMB spectrum. And obviously, you know, the other big piece is around voice. So many businesses that I go talk to still don't make that connection between the NBN being the, the deliverer of connectivity for their voice. They'll think of MBN as the internet, they'll then see their phone system, and they'll think of that as being separate. They'll see their fax machines, their FPOS machines, uh, and they'll see those as, as separate entities. Again, we wanna go out and ensure that they're starting to think of this from a whole of business conversation. And you know, in areas, uh, rural and regional, where the MBN has completed rollout, you know, some areas have already gone through disconnection or just starting through disconnection. This is a really kind of crunch year where the PSTN network is getting turned off in some of those you know, first rolled out areas. That would be a prioritization. I would say that you need to go talk to those customers to make sure that they have got everything moved across. And at the bigger end of town, you know, when they've got multiple voice lines, you know, maybe five, 10, all the way up to 20, 30 type call center, you know, that's where ISDN really comes in. And the ISDN disconnections start in September. Now, uh, if I focus on the regional and rural side, this is gonna be a, a real contentious kind of piece because where they've got that ISDN network, you know, we're not actually turning that off. The providers of ISDN, uh, no, can no longer support that technology. Um, so they are kind of turning that network off. Uh, and why we've had this conversation in the last kind of three, four years, too many businesses um, still haven't started that conversation. And with multiple numbers, you know, there, there's porting, there's network upgrades, maybe there's PBX upgrades. This is a, a long-term conversation, right? So we've got six months until those disconnections start kicking. So I would say anywhere you know that you've got a customer or a business in your area that has multiple phone lines, go have that conversation about this ISDN disconnection sooner rather than later. It's a really, really good way to get into new customers or with existing customers, start getting into new lines of business, particularly around the, the telephony piece. And again, this is where, you know, uh, Ingram Micro is really great with their Cloud Movers program with the guys from Switch Connect that we presented with last time, you know, getting into that Teams conversation, that that voice for Microsoft, that, that VoIP solution in there. So this is a big kind of piece of work that we are talking to partners and end customers alike about how we can help prepare you guys from that, from a pre-sales point of view, and we can absolutely help you know, you understand what types of technologies that those customers are getting, what does that mean for speeds and feeds, does there need to be an upgrade to like fiber to the premise or, or enterprise ethernet? We wanna help you guys get out in front of these conversations really early. Uh, and we can do that by helping map your customers across the, the MVN network in that space as well. But again, starting in September, you know, we are pretty close to June already. So we're coming down to the last kind of couple of months. So if anything that you take away from today, make sure you go talk to all the customers that you know have multiple lines, at least make sure that they're, they're prepped for this. So those are the big points that we've been talking about uh, kind of the last six months, again, both to business uh, and through to our partner channel as well. But I just wanted to touch a little bit more now on what you'll see as well coming out um, from the end of June from the MBN directly um, from a business perspective. So up until uh, up until now, really, we haven't been talking to businesses directly. We've either been talking to them through our channel partners uh, or through our um, service provider partners, but you'll start to see a lot more of direct campaigning and direct messaging coming up from the MBN about what does business grade mean on the MBN um, for business. So the first end of that is probably um, the enterprise ethernet product. Now that launched in October last year. 
that is our point to point fiber product right that is the product that goes all the way up to one gigabit one gigabit synchronous connections um, I'll dive a little bit more deeper into those technical specs in a minute. Uh, the next of the, is the Business MBN Fiber Expansion Program, where we're going out and identifying business intensive areas and rolling out fiber proactively to make it easier and uh, more cost effective to upgrade to the fiber network. Off the back of that is some new pricing that's going to be coming out from us in our business MBN bundles, where we've taken those business grade services, you know, such as the enhanced SLAs and the traffic class two and traffic class one, put some really uh, heavy discounts around those for our service providers to go out and promote those into the business community so that we can have a proper kind of quality of service conversation across the applications and their needs. And behind that is the Business Operations Center. So the Business Operations Center is uh, our kind of connection and resolution team dedicated to those business plans. So up until now, we've been running the Business Operations Center as a bit of a, a proof of concept since October, and partners that have been available um, to reach it through our channel program have been able to ensure that any kind of appointments or support escalations get sent into this business knock so that they are attended to in those enhanced SLAs over and above residential. So when our business plans launch, as long as it's determined as a business plan, when it's ordered, it will automatically go into the business operations center, which means we can start doing premium appointments, we can start doing coordinated appointments. If we need to have guys go in with security passes because the MDF is inside of a, a Westfield somewhere, et cetera, we can do that. And then from a support perspective, it'll automatically then go into the business knock, so it'll automatically have higher SLAs um, from a support perspective, as well as still being able to escalate it through our channel team as well. So that's really important, right? So we're rolling out brand new business grade fiber products, rolling business grade services over the top of that and backing that up with business grade support in there. So as we go out uh, at the end of next month and start heavily promoting these, this is gonna be a great time to go out to new customers, to customers you might already have that haven't yet Trans, um, transition to the MBN, even better go talk to the customers that you know are sitting on those residential services that might be having kind of contention or quality of service issues and help them have the conversation to upgrade onto a proper business plan for them. So off the back of that, I thought I'd just dive a little bit deeper into the enterprise ethernet product. This is probably the one I get um, asked a lot about from partners uh, is how can we get gigabit services uh, into our customers. Now, the good thing is, is that Enterprise Ethernet doesn't have to be a gig gig, right? We can start anywhere from 10 by 10 megabits um, synchronous services in there. Now, one of the key things is, is that the Enterprise Ethernet product is a separate um, fiber product outside of our general rollout. The good thing about that is that separate fiber strands, so we have a little bit of um, extra resiliency in terms of it's a different strand going into the business. So a, a customer that orders enterprise ethernet will actually end up with tube MBN connections, their standard MTM rollout, as well as the fiber enterprise ethernet rollout. So then you can again do some smarts across network resiliency in there. The other is that it's MEFS compliant. Um, so the, the general rollout is GPON, um, which is absolutely designed for a, a larger shared network. MEFS is much more designed on that point to point. And we find a lot of the uh, international uh, companies that have head offices, et cetera, this is the type of compliance that they like. They can have a little bit more, uh, I guess, understanding of the network traffic on the network. The other good thing about this is because it's a custom build, when we start working with our partners and their end customers and the service providers, we can then look at spreading out the costs of build costs, if there are any, I and mean, if they're close to you know, a fiber node already, the build costs are obviously quite negligible, um, but any costs, we can actually then work with the partner, the end customer and the service provider to look at the ROI and spread any costs across you know, the life of the contract. So very rarely are there any upfront um, cost to roll out enterprise ethernet. Um, and even if you've got a 
customer that may be starting on say 50 50 or 100 by 100 you know that's where the FTTP still kind of tops out at this stage for the traffic class 2 product and you've got the whole gigabit product yet to grow into and there's all already plans um, for the 10 gigabit services to roll out over here as well. So again, good future proofing in that piece. Um, now there is a, a lot to it in terms of the back end. You can see some of the high level kind of diagrams on how we build that to the poise, et cetera. But we've now got about, uh, it's a good dozen or so of our um, business service provider partners that have picked up the enterprise ethernet product. So if you want to find out more and look at maybe some pricing for some customers, more than happy for you to reach out to me. I can introduce you to the right um, service provider for you um, so that you can have that conversation. But this is probably the biggest kind of business end conversation that we're tending to have uh, at the moment. More effective than the fiber to the premise upgrade. Fiber to the premise upgrades are great when you're doing a, an area, say like a business park, um, but for individual premises, I'd highly recommend looking at the MBN Enterprise Ethernet product first. And again, absolutely can we help find the right partners um, for you in that space. Now off the back of that is our fiber expansion program. So this is where we've started to look at business intensive areas um, that have either generally been rolled out initially for fiber to the node or, or HFC, where we know um, there can be issues delivering the TC2 quality of service uh, in those areas. Um, and you see here, the, the image here I've got is actually a real one snapshotted from Brisbane. So you can start to see where we've just kind of polygoned out, you know, business intensive areas, things like smaller uh, metro areas, uh, business parks, um, shopping centers, etc. cetera. Um, so as some of the large organizations come onto the fiber network for, for MBN, we're also then lighting up those areas next door and shopping malls are a good example of that. Now we currently have around about two and a half million locations that fall across the 140 odd of these fiber expansion areas. So I say to many partners, look, let's absolutely have a look at your customer base. Let's map them out and find out what they're initially rolled out for. Let's understand what the speeds and feeds are. And then for anywhere we think they might need to upgrade to uh, a higher end product, you know, fiber to the premise or enterprise ethernet. Let's see if they fall into one of these areas. So you can at least go have a proactive conversation about what it means to, to upgrade to fiber to the premise and how much that unlocks in the bandwidth term. Again, particularly around the traffic class two side of things where you need that synchronous dedicated bandwidth. Um, but this is really, really easy for us to roll over that next level of information. It's obviously not information that's available on the public website. Right, so the public website is very much geared towards uh, residential or micro business and some of these fiber expansion programs, you know, it does come down to, uh, I guess, certain business areas. So again, what I say to most partners is, you know what, to be honest, don't waste too much time on our public website, right? It is just there for the general public. Make use of our internal channel engagement team. You know, even if it's only you know a couple of sites, all the way up to you know we've done entire databases for some partners. It's very easy for us to take and map addresses. We'll run it through our database. We'll run it through this fiber expansion database. We can give you a lot more information so you can go have a better conversation with your customers and even better, you know, the businesses either side of them to go have that proactive conversation about planning and the options that they have on the technology piece. Again, we're relying on our channel partners to have this kind of conversation. You guys are there to translate the techie into the business side of things. You know your customers best. Um, but again, this is the type of information that we can give you, second level information on your customers, on their technology, so you can actually have a, a fuller business conversation in that space. So when it comes to the plans that I was talking about, we're going out to market in what we call these kind of business bundles. Um, now this is just really a framework, obviously uh, because we're a wholesale provider, um, it is up to our service providers to pick up our plans and our pricing. They will productize and wrap their own services and support around it, et cetera. But this will give you a good concept of what we're looking to release come the end of June. So if we start down uh, the left-hand side of the table, this is really what I like to call the micro 
end of the scale, right? So this might be uh, your local florist that you look after. They have a store, they have an FPOS machine, they have their computer in there, they have their phone in there, right? So to be honest, you know what? A single phone line uh, and a bit of you know, low intensity web browsing, that absolutely is gonna be able to run on our TC4 network, right? We've got, like I said, we've got the majority of uh, micro and small businesses running on that at the moment. But obviously being a retail shop, they need to make sure that if there are any issues, they are supported, right, every day of the week. So we're wrapping in some uh, enhanced SLAs, which is our next, uh, which is our 12 hour SLA. So that if something goes wrong on a Friday, you know, a technician from the MBN can be out there you know, later that day or on the Saturday, right? So we're giving them technical network support in there as well and that's over and above the general SLAs that they would receive on a standard residential plan. If I move the next one over, um, this is where we're starting to get into, you know, uh, I, I like to think of it as more like the professional services side. So again, the concept here is that you've got uh, an end customer business from a data perspective, they're not that intensive, but they've got a lot of people in there that use phones. So I tend to use the example of an accountancy firm, 10 accountants, they're not doing anything high-end, they're not doing any videography or CAD drawings. However, they are still using a bit of you know, their um, cloud accounting, logging into customers' accounts, et cetera, but really their business intensive aspect is voice. So here, we're running them on a TC4, service from a bandwidth point of view, but we're rolling over the top of that dedicated one down, one up megabit second TC1, i.e. our highest quality of service, um, lowest latency over the top of that to run their, vo their voice down, right? Easily support up to 10 lines running down that TC1. So now we're automatically kind of prioritizing that traffic across the entirety of our network because voice is the most important to them. Right, so when we move along to the next one, now we're starting to get into customers that might have multiple sites, right? They might have one head office, um, or you know they are you know a single office, but they're doing you know more data intensive. So backing up is really important to them. They do a lot of uploading because they do work with photography or videos or or CAD drawings. So this is where we start to bundle in the TC2 service. So again, as a concept, you can see that we're rolling out, say, either 5020 or 140 TC4, but inside that, that TC4 envelope, we are dedicating 2020 on that committed data rate. So we've got a 2020 TC2 service inside of that overall 140 TC4 service. So absolutely, can we do this blended, you know, this blended service across the one connection? Absolutely, do you need to make sure you have a smart CPE, you know, a smart router at the end of it so you can start tagging traffic? Again, this is really where it comes in to managing the network. You know, uh, turning on the service as a bandwidth or a connection conversation, having that conversation with the customers, understanding the network, understanding their application needs, this is where partners come in so you can have that prioritization of data traffic and start shaping that for them. And then obviously down the end, we're getting to the higher end of the scale where we're having to you know, make sure they're on fiber or onto enterprise ethernet. And again, running a larger you know, TC4 um, component and then running say a 50-50 over the top of that. Again, we're talking about classes of traffic. We're talking about being able to prioritize business intensive real time application needs in there. So that's kind of the four silos that we will be going out and talking to the market about. Uh, and we'll actually be backing that up with, you know, things like plan selectors um, on our websites, et cetera, so that end customers can go to our website and start popping in their data and getting a general idea of the type of business grade services that they might need to go out and talk to. Um, but really, again, from a managed services perspective, here's a great way to go in, talk to customers, help them understand that everything now is going to be data. So you really need to look at your applications. You really need to have a conversation about what is important to them so that you can help them prioritize that traffic and set up those network profiles for them. But as said, you'll start to see a lot more in the media um, from us come the end of June when we start going out to market and talking directly to businesses about business grade offerings and what that actually means and where they actually go to talk to um, to purchase those. 
So there's a little bit of a summary in terms of what are those new business services that are coming out. You can see there that you know we now really do cover the, the whole gamut. You know whether it's that that micro business, that work from home business, we've got the ability to give them business grade support, even if it's just that traffic class four, as long as it's got that business enhanced SLA on it, we will then be able to tag it as a business product. They'll still go into that business operations center from a connectivity point of view, and they'll still have that business level of support from a restoration point of view. Then as we get into that medium-sized business, you know, that kind of multi-site type office or that they've got that higher intensive band needs, that's where we start wrapping in the TC4 overlaying TC1 or overlaying TC2 and again bundling in those enhanced SLAs so they've got that level of support in there and obviously at the top end yes we can go all the way to a full one gig by one gig on our enterprise ethernet service and again we've got the ability to have multiple classes of traffic in there as well and in fact the enterprise ethernet product has its own knock um, again, the Enterprise Operations Center. So again, a team dedicated to the rollout, installation, and support of those services in there. So now from an MSP point of view, you can go have a talk to any customer in any space and comfortably be able to talk to about the MBN solutions in there. And again, you know, MBN may be the secondary connection or the backup connection uh, in their profile, but in some way, shape or form, we are going to be talking to every single business about how the MBN rolls into their network. So again, going back to my opening slide around starting to have a true networking conversation, having that agility manage network is going to be really, really key going forward. And there's a great way if you're not already in that space to start moving into, into that space as well. And again, telephony, that VoIP, uh, it's going to be really, really key with the death of those ISDN services. But obviously, again, you know, you've got the likes of Switch Connect and their partnership with Ingram Micro there to be able to handle that conversation as well. So what I thought I'd cover off next is to give everyone a bit of an idea of what we go talk to when we go talk to in businesses directly. And I do this quite a lot with uh, our accredited partners. I was at a Chamber of Commerce. Um, the other day where one of our partners, Northern um, Business IT on Northern Beaches, ran a session with the local Chamber of Commerce there. We stood up, talk about uh, MBM business grade. Uh, they had one of their customers actually talk through their own case study about what it took for them to move across, you know, planning the migration, testing services, doing a, a soft handover while they still had ADSL uh, in the back end, and then moving their phones across. So again, anywhere we can go out and talk to end customers and bring our partners into that, I think it makes it a lot more valuable for the end customer and really shows the value that IT brings to this to this story. So when I go out and talk to in business customers, I always talk about kind of the three things that you need to do before you actually make a choice in terms of a plan before you even start to think about moving across, right? Obviously, number one is start looking at all the services that you know are going to be disconnected. And for a lot of small businesses, that's still PSTN, but the PSTN network still carries your voice. You know, a lot still rely for the FPOS machines. There are still a lot of fax machines and photocopy machines out there, um, lift alarms, fire alarms, medical alarms, call back to base security alarms, anything that sits on that PSTN network is um, due for disconnection, right? So again, start thinking about that whole of business conversation. What are all the things that you use uh, to run your business at any time? Then obviously we start talking about now that you know you're going to need to have business grade services, who do you go start talking to? And what's really great now as part of this campaign launching, and you may have already seen it, you can go to our website, go to mbn.com.au, go to the business section, and you'll actually see a list of providers that have jumped through enough hoops to say they're a business grade provider. And there's only about 12 of them, um, and I and I can talk to a little bit more of them uh, as well. Uh, but inside that 12, you know, there's a good seven or so that we work closely with on the channel side um, because they have their own channel programs. Um, so again, if you want to start talking about how you can integrate 
great you know, reselling MBN services in there, depending on whether it's commission or resale or referral or white label, we can find the right partners for you. And then the last piece is obviously preparing for the switch, right? It is a plan from, you know, my background is, you know, being in, in tech and from your guys' perspective as MSPs, this is a standard network migration. It needs to be planned. It needs to be, you know, staged. It should be a soft handover as and when we can. There needs to be testing before things get turned off. So it's, it's not simply unplugging one plug and plugging into another one which is what a lot of small businesses think it is, uh, it really is a proper network migration. So even, you know, here's a great revenue service just going in and doing ambient readiness survey or doing, you know, a, a transition plan for MBN. Right there at the get-go, there's a great way to set up new revenue streams. But the next thing we talk to um, to end businesses is obviously about thinking how they profile and prioritize that traffic. Again, everything now is going to be zeros and ones. So voice is obviously you know, very, very important to every business. It's still their main way of communication and absolutely is a real-time application that needs to have quality of service behind it um, so that you don't have any of those kind of interferences, et cetera. Right? It's one thing to have a bit of a bump while you're watching your Netflix or your YouTubes, but that's that's not kosher for voice. Absolutely, that's high priority. Then we start thinking about you know, what's that next level. So it could be you know, video conferencing or really for most businesses, it's backups, right? Data recovery, business continuity. Instead of trying to back up once every night, how about building a backup schedule so you can back up you know, two or three times a day? Even better, back up every hour. You know, so that if there is anything that happens and we still see a lot of you know, kind of crypto locker stuff, you can roll back an hour, you can roll back a couple of hours as trying to roll back a week or a day, right? So again, backup is really important. Disaster recovery is really important. Make sure that you, know, you can improve their business by making it more secure. Really pragmatic way to go and talk about what that digital transformation piece looks like. But again, when I talk to in businesses, I say, what are your most important applications? Is that voice? Absolutely. Do you use a cloud accountancy package that is trying to update your stock levels in real time? Well, then that's really important. You know, are you using a CRM software? Are you using things like SharePoint? where you need to have you know, really good, rapid, low latency responses. Any of that real-time application stuff, these are the things that we need to talk about prioritizing. So again, trying to get them to think about their business from a digital perspective and what's more important. And obviously off the back of that, then we start going in, into the different traffic classes. And you know, look, it's really tech traffic classes is real technical jargon. I start talking about, you know, if you had a motorway for your data, what would you build into a bus lane, right? And so if we can build you a traffic class two bus lane, what would you run down there? Or maybe, you know, you don't use a lot of data, um, so voice is still the main important thing to you. So let's run, you know, your one or two lines down that traffic class one, and then anything and everything else that it doesn't matter if it takes an extra couple of seconds, you know, whether it's a YouTube or even email, email doesn't need to be real time. Let's run that down traffic class four, down your normal broadband. So again, just can start thinking about what they prioritize from a application perspective and how that translates into a data perspective and how they can prioritize that across the network. And then I tend to talk through this um, animation just to give them an idea of how we can prioritize that traffic and anything that runs down that middle lane, that web lane, for us that's traffic class four, right? But that doesn't need to be prioritized. So if some of those packets get dropped, then that's okay. We're still getting full priority of the traffic class two, those business apps and that business voice in there. So making full use of the utilization of the network, you know, we can prioritize it down there. You can choose what needs to be the most important to you. And this is when it really starts to resonate to businesses that they do need to think about their internet more than just watching Netflix. They need to think about which there is, which ones leave the, their network first and which we can prioritize now across the whole network and that's one of the biggest benefits um, of the MBN traffic classes across ADSL. ADSL 
you know, you kind of waited for your customer to get connected, then you figured out what they were actually able to pull. If they were lucky, they were getting, say, 12 meg. Um, and then look, you could prioritize traffic out of their router, but as soon as it got onto the ADSL network, it was kind of just lumped in with everything else. Now with the traffic classes, as long as it sits on the MBN network, we can prioritize it from, from end to end. So again, you know, that prioritization piece really comes back to you guys as partners to have that conversation, to tag that traffic in there. So you're helping them make full use of the MBN and the different traffic classes that are now available to them. Again, at the enterprise end, you know, this is a conversation that we've been able to have for many years, um, but at small and medium business end, it's only now as we're replacing the ADSL and we can put traffic classes over the MBN network that you can have a, a proper network conversation with these guys. Again, it's all part of that digital transformation piece, the same way we used to talk about cloud, um, you know, with Microsoft 365, et cetera. Now we can talk about utilizing enterprise grade networks for our SMB community as well. So here's just a list of the business providers that are now up on our website. Again, you can go have a look uh, at the MBN's website, go into the business section, uh, and you'll see a list of providers here. So if you have a customer that you know, is asking you, who should I go talk to about you know, MBN from a services perspective, if you, don't, if you don't already partner with someone in this space, here's a really good way to start that conversation. Say, hey, not everyone is the same. These are the guys that are delivering business grade products. And from a partner perspective, you know, there's about seven or eight that sit inside of these guys that have their own channel programs that we can introduce you to. So whether or not you're looking for uh, just a referral or a commission, um, or you're starting to look at how you might be able to build that into your billing, uh, white labeling it, or even wholesaling it, all these partners tend to have a uh, a referral program or a white labeling program. But again, this is where we come in from our program perspective to help make sure we can introduce you to the right guys, find the right business model for you to start integrating that in there. And so again, you know, when we're talking to customers, you know, we do talk about the fact that they can choose a technology. They've always got the option to upgrade to a fiber product, whether it's fiber to the premise or enterprise ethernet. It's also a really good point where I hone home to um, is that it's important to work with our business accredited advisors in the channel community because they have direct access to us, they can talk to us about the options, you know, and we can get you a quote on fiber upgrade. Uh, normally takes about a week and there's no cost to it. On the general public side, if you went to our website, I think it costs something like $600 to get a quote, uh, and there's a long waiting time in there. So again, this is a great way for us to add value to you We're going to have those conversations because we can give you again the right information at the right time you have direct access to the MBN uh, and we can get that to you for free right so again adds a lot of value for when you go and talking to existing and new customers about why they need to engage with you before they make the move because again we can give you so much more information about the site give you so much more information about the options that they have in this space and the final piece that I generally talk through is why would they pair up with one of our business MBN accredited advisors? And you can see on, on the left side, obviously you've got the MBN and you know it's very hard to talk to the MBN directly. We do have call centers, right? Uh, if a business calls our call center, um, they will actually get directed into our channel team. So if they need a ICT advisor, we can make sure we point them in the right direction to one of our business MBN accredited advisors. But you know, as an MBN business accredited advisor, you have a direct line to us. We can make sure that you are talking to the right service provider that provides the right type of business grade plan and make sure that they have a full understanding of their options from a plan perspective, from a technology perspective. We can help around doing upgrades to the technology. If there's multiple sites, you know, we can look at doing special build deals in there as well. So just purely from a pre-sales point of view, you know, talking to a business and being accredited advisor adds so much more value for a business than simply responding to a pamphlet or a phone call, you know, that they get when they, they get ready for service. Then 
on the right hand side, once they've had that discussion about what their business needs actually are, now we start talking about what it means to actually move across. So plan that transition. It shouldn't be a hard cut over. You should be doing it stage, right? So we can do testing in there, making sure everything is working as business as usual, complete the migration. We're all ready for when you know the copper services get disconnected. You're well and truly ahead of the curve. And then now start looking at that kind of next level, that transformation piece. What are the other services now that you got access to higher bandwidth, high quality of service bandwidth as well? Again, start talking about you know, voice uh, over IP, putting that into Microsoft Teams, using things like video chat within Teams, making use of you know, SharePoint within there as well. Start really having that, that kind of cloud conversation. Um, and really get them on to that digital transformation journey. Again, you guys can make it really pragmatic. It might start at doing decent backups. It might start at having a better DR plan with Azure. Um, it might then start turning into a true collaboration piece with the Office 365. This is the value that you guys bring because you understand the business, you understand the network, you understand the technology way more than their current you know, service provider will understand because they're just worried about turning the service on, they're not thinking about what's happening after the plug, they're not thinking about the customer, and they're not thinking about the network needs in there. So again, I thought that might just be handy to let you guys know the type of conversation that I'm having with uh, end businesses when we go out and talk to the likes of the regional councils and the chambers of commerce, et cetera. So that brings me then to what next, right? So if you're not already a part of the MBN ICT channel program, it's dead easy to get on board. Simply go to the website, right? Under the business section, there's a big green button that says join the ICT channel program. That will get you registered onto the program. Go through our certification. Now our certification is very straightforward. It's just the fundamentals of the network. It's only five little modules. It maybe takes an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, to go through. It'll take you through the different technologies. It'll take you deeper into those traffic classes, how it all fits together, the options that you have around like, you know, satellite fixed wireless upgrading to fiber to the premise. It's dead easy, really straightforward. I encourage you to get as much of your team across that as possible, whether in the, whether they're in sales or technical, anyone that's talking to an end customer, that MBN conversation is going to come up in some way, shape or form. You'll get a certificate. Uh, anyone that runs through and passes will get a certificate. Then as a business, um, those business owners on the line, get you know, get your guys trained, get them certified, and then we can accredit your company. Now what that means is we can then unlock branding and you'll see the business MBN accredited advisor logo there. Take that logo, pop it onto your website, pop it onto all your emails, your business cards, any you know, EDMs or any marketing you're sending out really help it to identify you as a, that someone unique in their community that can have that agnostic conversation about NBN. Um, I really support you know, a lot of the partners that have taken this logo already. They put big signs outside their offices. They put pages up on their website. You know, put a little bit of SEO and AdWords around it. So when someone Googles you know NBN in whatever area, they're already already popping up. Uh, it also unlocks some of the marketing capabilities as well, right? So we've got some business grade um, checklist, readiness checklists that you can pop your logo and details on. Great conversation starter for existing customers, even better conversation starter going out, out to new customers there. And when we start going out and doing you know, events, like I said, I just did a business of chambers, business commerce chamber event the other day that was driven by Leo, one of our partners, he came to us, said, I've got a great audience for you. We had 40 end businesses come along. It was a great way for us to go talk about MBN, but even better to showcase our program uh, and showcase our partners that are working with us in this space. So again, head to the website, sign up, register, do the training, get you guys to do the training, unlock the branding, and absolutely go make the most of it and then use us as much as you need to. That opens the pre-sale support, or opens the post-sale support, or opens our partner marketing channel as well. And then outside of that, 
you know, we are working with distributors such as Ingram Micro, uh, and we're working with vendors such as Microsoft to then showcase um, those solutions that lie on top of that digital transformation journey. And from a service provider piece, again, we've got those business grade service providers. We know the ones that have the different channel programs. We can make sure we connect you with those right service providers providers that fit with you and your business on how you want to be able to start integrating this type of conversation into your managed services portfolio. Here you can see an example of um, the business checklist that we've got here. So you can see this is your pre-migration checklist. You can pop your logo up the top there. You've got your contact details to so pop in at the bottom. Again, really easy way to um, make yourself unique in market, send this out to you know, new customers, send it out to your existing customers, and really get them to start thinking about this whole of business conversation so that they understand that they really do need to engage someone like you to actually plan this from a transition point of view, from a network point of view, and again, starting that transformation conversation as well. Again, all you need to do to get access to this is go through the training, get certified, and get your business accredited to unlock the, the branding and the marketing capabilities. So, where to next? Absolutely, I encourage you to work with our team. Let us work through your customers, making sure that we can map their customer addresses. Sometimes just finding addresses is hard in itself, especially if they're in shopping malls. So let's prep your customers, let's find out what technology they're going to be on. What does that mean for speeds and feeds? What does that mean for traffic class two versus traffic class four? What does that maybe mean if we need to upgrade them to fiber to the premise or enterprise ethernet? And it's there when, especially when we talk about multiple sites, we can help around build deals in that respect as well, working with the service providers. Even better, you know, making sure that you're building up visibility inside the MBN here so that you're building your advisor profile both out in your community and both inside the MBN. So as we get more and more customers calling us directly and asking us who to go talk to, we know where you are, we know what your speciality is, we know the types of customers that you work with, so we can introduce them through to you. Again, ISDN and multi-site customers, this would be the top of my list to start that process, start that pre-sales mapping process with us. And again, leverage those marketing resources. They're just sitting there waiting for you to pick them up, run through them. We've got plenty of content, a lot of research. So if you want to do blogs, if you want to do podcasts, if you want to do webinars, if you want to do breakfast events, make sure that you reach out. We can help in any way that we can. And even better, let us help you go out and find new customer leads and build your profile and build your customer base. Everyone's going to get affected by the MBN. Everyone needs to talk to someone like you to make sure that they're planning to move across, moved across successfully, and they're making use of what's left. So just to wrap up, obviously we are involved in the Cloud Movers program with Ingram Micro, and as part of that, we've got the ability for you to raise your profile into the fast lane just by working with us by going onto our program, registering, there's bonus points for registering, there's bonus points for doing the site qualification with us. So just by being involved with the MBN and being involved with Ingram Micro, you can absolutely accelerate your position in the Cloud Movers program. So first of all, register, certify your business, pass that training, do the accreditation, and then register those opportunities. There are bonus points galore for you guys to reach out and grab. Make sure you're part of our program. Make sure you do your accreditation and start popping through those in customer addresses so we can build out those site qualifications for you and you get bonus points for that as well. All right. Well, that's me for this afternoon. Once again, I do thank you all for spending time this afternoon, especially at this time of year. Any further questions, feel free to reach out to the Ingram Micro team. You'll see our website address on there to join the program. Feel free to drop us a line at ICT channel at mbnco.com.au or give us a call on 1300 639 677. But thank you again. If there are any questions, please feel free to pop them through and we can answer those in the last five to 10 minutes that we have. Other than that, thank you very much for joining us.